Good morning, Misfits. You are tuning into episode 27 of the Misfit Project. I am your host, Drew Crandall, and we are joined. I am joined. Who's we? I haven't even said your names yet. <laughs> You're a we. This has been a while. <laughs> you can you call tell? me? Ted, Sherb, Hunter, all here for the return of the Misfit Project. I'm going to Exciting address. Day. I'm going to address where we've been, and then for some people, who we are. Right. Good call, I'd say. So the Misfit Project began as something where we were trying to get information out there on the outside of the gym lifestyle kind of stuff, for lack of a better sentence. (laughs) And and we tried really hard to say that our community was going to be everyone in the whole wide world and that we were going to try really hard to stay away from talking about CrossFit and high intensity exercise and things of that nature. And we had a, a good run. I enjoyed doing the 26 episodes, but it sort of felt like our direction didn't make any sense when almost all of our listeners were misfits and we were kind of hiding it in some corner somewhere. So you might be listening to your very first episode of the Misfit Project. If you would like to check out the previous 26 episodes, you can check those out just by searching for The Misfit Project, I think it is. Yep. yep. The or Misfit Project. MisfitProject.com. Or MisfitProject.com. It still exist. You can get back into the archives. You can check that stuff out. We are about to dig into what we did originally for those first six episodes. Um, so you do not need to listen to those. We're, we're going to do a little bit of a recap when it comes to that. And we're going to immerse ourselves in the community that is our community, the people that we want to talk to the people that we want to present this information to. And if it trickles out and you guys share it with other people, then that's a win-win. Um, so that's why you are now seeing the misfit project on misfit athletics. Um, and the idea behind sort of the misfit podcast, the unprepared podcast, the misfit project podcast, all being in one place is we're trying to make sure that people can find it because that's what's really important for us to make sure that if we're going to make this stuff that we get it out to people and then you out there listening, watching, whatever you're doing can tell us what you think of what we're doing as opposed to, again, trying to hide it somewhere. It, uh, it also serves to kind of mix up the content a little bit. Absolutely. Um, our podcasts sometimes fall into this groove of news podcasts talking about cycles and, and whatnot. And I think it's it's good for us to try to show who we are in a more personal way instead of just talking about the website kind of talking about other topics that can go along to help the people that follow i couldn't agree more and and i think we had that original intent it was just one of those things where we really wanted it to take hold you know to maybe even bring people into our community and um one thing that i will say that that's really important i've gotten a lot of messages about this over the last year Where's the Misfit Project? And I've actually gotten even more people in person talk to me at Wadapalooza, at training camps at different places. And you guys are the reason why we're jumping back into this. Um, If you came and talked to me and you thought that it was, you know, hard to approach us, bring the topics up. I know, I know some of you had some really deep and personal conversations with me, which, you know, really helped me kind of understand the impact that we were having. Um, Thank you very much. And if you didn't have that conversation and you wanted to, please do so in the future. We're super approachable, uh, like to, to meet everyone, talk to everyone, all that good stuff. So uh, thank you to everybody that reached out and, and is asking for this stuff to come back. It is back and we're going to do our best to, to kind of follow a two, three times a month schedule. Um, the potentially even more exciting thing is we are in the near future going to start offering health coaching. We talked about it fairly often in the in the previous 26 episodes about trying to set up a system where we can get health coaching out to people. And in the not so distant future, we are going to be accepting 10 clients. So keep your eyes out for that application. Um, it's going to sort of be that first run to make sure that that we're happy with the product and we're happy with the relationships we're creating. And we'll find out from there how scalable it really is, how many people we can bring in, but keep your eyes out for health coaching. Um, I know a lot of people would want to know what that is. And specifically if it involves nutrition coaching, 
yes, that is a part of it. Um, so if you've been looking for that from the Misfit Athletics team for a while, that is going to be available, but it's part of a bigger package. And if you listen to these episodes that are coming up, you'll kind of get a better idea of, of what we're after. So episode 27, AKA episode one of the reboot of the <laughs> reboot. Misfit Project is all about tribes. That, that basis for, for everything that we talk about with the Misfit Project is the tribes. And so I can shut up for at least 10 seconds. I want one of you guys to just take the reins and talk a little bit about what effect your personal relationships have on your life. I mean, obviously we're involved with, uh, we're in a place like this, Misfit HQ, where community is really important. Um, I mean, I've picked a profession that has me dealing with people constantly day in and day out. And for me, like, and you know, being a, a gym owner too, it's that you create this atmosphere of people you want to be around and who seem to tend to navigate or you know latch onto your personality. And if that's not a positive environment, like you're not going to enjoy what you do. So this like topic specifically is super important to me because you know if you want to be the most productive, healthiest human being you can, like having negative people or negative concepts or negative like feelings around you is just not conducive to one enjoying your life and two being able to, you know, give back to other people. So, I mean, if you project positivity out in the world, you'll get it back. So it seems super important to me that like when I address someone or I have conversations, it's always from an aspect of like positivity and making sure that if you're in my life that you're helping me and I'm helping you and I'm like a very uh, encouraging manner rather than like, why are you doing the things that you're doing? Because, you know, you can only take so much of that. And if you have that constantly going through your mind, you're going to become a negative person. You're not going to have as much enjoyment and a lot of bad you know, personal behaviors come from having negative relationships early on or maybe essentially learn through your experiences. So try to elicit as many positive experiences as possible and keeping positive people around you is important so that you, I can actually say happy, which for me is super important. Yeah. I, uh, you, at the very end, you talked about kind of my thought on it is that people inherently seek fulfillment in their life, their work, whatever. They're, I think pretty much most people, when you get down to it, are seeking either work that is meaningful or just relationships that are meaningful. And that stems from being around people who you, uh, who you, you can associate with, who you have things in common with, who you want to spend time with, who you want to be around. And uh, there are people who you know get up, go to work every day, don't enjoy what they do, and then they come home and are either... Uh, either by themselves or not not happy with the situation they're in and to me like the selection of your tribe goes beyond just kind of who you hang out with it's about what you're trying to what you're trying to get out of really your life like as far as that fulfillment uh making you making it feel like you've made a positive impact on other people through your life or whatever I couldn't agree with you more I mean that's one of the reasons why I find what I do so rewarding being a CrossFit coach is that you know, you have this opportunity to help people change their life for the better. And, you know, pursuit of money is great, pursuit of property, whatever, vacations, whatever you're into, that's great and all. But like, for me, it's super important that I feel good about what I do and that I've changed someone's life. I mean, adding years onto someone's life or adding mobility back into their life is, is humongous. And I feel like that makes my job like super rewarding. So like those days you're like, why am I still up? It's like 11 PM and I'm still answering messages from people who go to the gym. Like, yeah, some people would look at that as tedious, but for me, I look at that as like, I'm building an environment and people around me that I want to be around and I'm helping them. And in turn, they help me. So for me, it's just kind of like, you know, pay it forward because that's going to come back to you, you know, 5X, 10X, 50X, whatever. So this conversation <clears throat> is based upon how much of a, an impact personal relationships have on your health, you know, and we're, we always go back and forth within the Misfit Project from we can provide you with the numbers and the science, you know, if that's the way that your mind works. Um, but what we really love is when there's that intuitive piece and you start to feel what's going on in your life, that's going to be the most powerful. It's nice. We always joke. It's nice to have the like dinner party facts ready. Um, because sometimes you really do need that to, to kind of kick, get yeah, somebody that over. nudge a little yeah, bit. Yeah, exactly. Over. Um, and you know, we will dig into both sides, but this is, um, Right before we got the podcast going, there were three microphones here and Ted wanted to take his spot behind the camera and like 
I want all four mics in here. I want to have this conversation. I want to be able to ask Ted, you know, this other half of, or the other side of this tribes thing is, you know, sunshine and being outside and whatnot. And I know that both of those things are kind of important to you in your life. And I want you part of the conversation. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah. Put me on the spot. Um, <laughs> perfect. Do you like to go outside? Love to go outside. Do you like <laughs> sunshine? Love it. Yeah. Love it. Uh, you know, we're, we're getting to a point now in, in this area where the sun is starting to show its face a little bit more and it, it it's a big difference in mood when you can either wake up in the morning or come home in the afternoon and, you know, sit on the back porch and do work in the sun or read in the sun. You probably would do, <laughs> uh, or drink your coffee in the sun, uh, either starting that day or finishing that day, uh, can really round out a positive mood for the entire day. Absolutely. One way or the other, whether you're finishing your day or starting your day. Um, and it's, it's something that you, <laughs> you really realize after the end of a long winter when you haven't seen a lot of that sun. I mean, we're only, we're barely into it and I can tell a difference personally. Yeah. I was just saying, I it's literally just, went out on my porch this morning to stoop and like had a cup of coffee and sat in the sun through the you know, ball with my dog. And I was like, this is such a better way to start my day compared to like sitting at the bar in my like kitchen at like. Man, this this is terrible. Yeah, it's, yeah. exactly. On that, it's phone. just it, it's just so demoralizing to wake up at like five o'clock in the morning and you're like it's it's freezing. You like walk out to your car that's got frost all over it. It's still pitch black out. You're just like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> what, am I, what am I doing? But when like sun's coming up, it's starting to get warmer. Like it can really, like you said, shape the way that you start and or finish your day yeah it's those days when it's 45 degrees out and the sun's out and it's after the winter and you're like well now it's t-shirt and shorts weather <laughs> yeah <laughs> happens in Maine. It's yeah. all too often. people are listening like what the hell are you yeah. talking yeah. about right now yeah after after suffering six months of bitter cold and darkness it's it's when nice you're in that. a when you're in a community in a crossfit gym in a place that has this actually has the seasons when that door starts to open up more people start the to show changes. up. The mood changes within the gym. More people stay after. Yeah, you know they're doing yep. you know planks in the driveway, kind of a thing. Like like everything kind of takes over. And that we don't need to know everything that's behind it necessarily to just say like, oh, I know exactly what he's talking about. I know that feeling. There's something to it. So that let, I mean, people always talk about the vacation effect. Like there's so many things that we talk about within the Misfit Project that are like you know maybe are improved by 50 60 percent when you just go on vacation because you're outside yep. typically for a lot of people it's warm typically you're with the people that you want to be with you know the stress levels are low you sleep the amount that you want to sleep all of these different factors play into it and when we can once again feel those changes like actually like take them in and like this is making a difference and we sit here and we put out the information like hey that's not some sort of like coincidence like get out there and try to reverse engineer that situation yeah you know what about your life when things are going well like what's changing what's different and that's kind of the idea behind ancestral health is we're in this terrifying obesity cancer diabetes you know heart disease epidemic you know in an insane scale in the united states and, and in a big scale in the rest of the world and you know, I talked about it the first time we did this episode and I talked to people all the time about it. We don't need to argue over whether <laughs> cavemen ate bread or not. Like that's not, we're not, you know, the, the paleo, you know, zealots or whatever. We're yeah. not after that. What we're after is what went wrong? What were we doing right? Like there's still plenty of stuff that's in modern day, modern time. That's awesome. That we all enjoy. Yeah. We just can't let our biology go shiny light. Oh, cool. <laughs> I love that. That's awesome. Like that's the thing that we kind of need to stay away from. And the scientific side of the, the whole tribes thing is we evolved in groups. We evolved in groups because we needed to procreate. We needed to share jobs. We needed to be able to protect each other. There's all these different things and are, you know, over this in crazy long period of time, something that we can't even really fathom. You know, when we think like, you know, an hour of <laughs> fasted cardio is long. <laughs> we're talking millions of years it's kind of hard to put it into perspective but we developed reward systems that are you know hormones chemicals in our bodies that tell us this stuff is better um so what we can do is reverse engineer that situation 
by doing all this stuff that has a really low barrier to entry. We're not going to ask people within the Misfit Project to, you know, we're not going to start selling supplements that cost, you know, cost us 10 cents to bring the powder in and then we dump it into a jar and charge you $400 for it. (laughs) Like that kind of thing is not going to happen. We want to put the information out there that says most of the stuff that's going to affect your health is free. And a lot of it's actually kind of easy. And that's got to do it. Exactly. (laughs) And that's so powerful. So when we have those reward systems and we don't do it, we get to see the side of that negative feedback loop that every single person's been in. And it's easier to get into it in the winter. You're not going to spend as much time with people, you know, those outdoor activities. You're not going to stay at the gym as long, you know, not that warm in the gym here in the winter (laughs) because we keep it at 60. And if we go to 70, everyone says it's way too hot. (laughs) So like we don't have a lot of wiggle room there. It's like, essentially freezing out in the gym but if you try to exercise and turn the heat up you're screwed so there's really nowhere for us to go so we don't spend as much time out in the gym we don't you know get that sunshine we start to have these things happen to us and they tell us that we're you know we're antisocial or we don't want to be around people and it starts to get worse and it gets worse and it gets worse and your hormones trick you into thinking that you know, that person that, you know, you are in the summer is gone. Like, I don't want to hang out with my friends. I don't want to do anything. I don't watch Netflix. Like, and what's great about this is we all go through it and we all do it. And we always feel alone in it. And we feel like, man, I feel like crap. And I go to work and this guy seems like he's having a great time. This is bullshit. Like we all go through that stuff. And one of the things that can make it a lot easier is just recognizing that like people might put on a face when they're somewhere, but it's challenging so in Maine yeah. in the winter. It is challenging without thinking about stuff like this and trying to like hack the system. I was just going to say what you just said is super important for people to listen to and hear is that you aren't alone and you're not like, no offense, no unique in the situation that we all have these, uh, you know, you're not special. Downtime. <laughs> yeah. This downtime. We're not maybe not feeling our best or not doing what we want to be doing. And like you just said, you know, acknowledge that it's happening and then track it. That's what's really cool about this stuff is that, It's a really simple question. Did I go outside today? Answer is yes. Well, good. I'm doing something in the right direction. No. Well, I'm going to continue to feel the way I feel. Am I paying attention to how I'm eating? Again, same idea. Am I paying attention to my relationships? Those are all things that you can very easily identify and measure and then say, all right, well, it's very obvious that when I don't do these things, I'm not in a good mood. But when I do these things, I'm in a good mood. So now you have the opportunity to change your status, which I think is the most empowering thing is that you have the power within your own hands to do things that don't cost any money to make yourself feel better. I mean, if don't do that, then it becomes your fault, but you now know what these things are and you have this opportunity to improve them. So let's take a step in the right direction. And the side note to that is if we do have this tribe, this modern version of a tribe, I might be able to tell that you're not doing that stuff anymore. And I might be able to say something to Mm -hmm. you and vice versa. We can try to dig ourselves out of this stuff. The, the, the tribe thing, what changes about it nowadays and what's really important to cover is like, I don't know what tribes were like back in the day, but I know that there was a lot of, I don't know, like murder and like, <laughs> like we don't need to, we get to every choose. aspect, <laughs> we get to choose who's in our tribe. That's yep. this huge difference. Like think about you're born into a group of, I don't know, 20, 30 people and there's no one for hundreds of miles. And a lot of choices when it comes to that. Stuck. Like you're kind of stuck there. And those reward systems are still built in, but now we get to say, this is a toxic relationship. Like there's a reason why we want to hold on to them. That's also an evolutionary thing that we can try to discard. But if we know that we can, you know, either improve a relationship, like maybe, you know, maybe I'm the one that's causing the issue. And I try to fix that. But at the end of the day, if we've put in the effort and this is, has this huge negative impact on your life, you have the ability to say bye or to like at least choose to, you know, if, if like, let's say it's like a, a work thing, family yeah. member or a work thing, choose to just not go that route as often as you used to. You don't feel as obligated to, to get into that kind of thing. So the the modern tribe aspect is really important and that's a really you know we're talking about a lot of positive stuff right now auditing your personal relationships is not the easiest thing in the world it's challenging but it has a high level of importance yeah well the 
it, it's kind of interesting because I, I feel like a lot of people would say like, oh, we, you know, we've lost our, that ancestral tribal kind of communal uh, aspect of our, our lives because of modern society. And that's, that's probably true to a large degree, but we, we have a much better opportunity, like you're saying, to, to be more selective about the people that we do, that we choose to associate with and could, the- should theoretically be able to build like a better kind of stronger tribe that is not concerned about, you know, being, being hunted or killed or something like that going, going way back, you know, and, and like you said, you can choose what situations you choose to put yourself in or who you choose to to associate with it's just it's just kind of trying to find that find your tribe i guess yeah and there's there's parts of it too that are just baggage and you can really take care of that system you 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 might think that you wouldn't want to hang out with someone but i'm just i keep going back to the gym out there it's you know just on the other side of that wall is our crossfit gym and there's every single kind of person out there. And as a whole, you know, all of these people are great. They're really fun to hang out with. You know, someone will have a birthday party and they throw it up in the in a Facebook group and you show up and like you realize that like just because you, you know, you were a little bit older now, we kind of have a clean slate when it comes to those personal relationships that you can make a connection with a million different kinds of people right you know for for lack of a better yeah, term yeah it just it just takes a small like conversation or you learn something something about someone that, and, that you have you like let it down for a yeah, second yeah you may like you find a thread just a small thread to pull something you have in common with somebody else and 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 you keep pulling that thread and and over time you start to develop that kind of relationship would you say there's value in compartmentalization a little bit so what I'm thinking is a lot of people's lives are 40 hours a week in a workspace. Mm -hmm. A lot of times you can't change those people that you're working with. Uh, When I used to work for a big tech company, I won't be specific. It was a pretty stressful (laughs) job. It's one of the biggest. Yeah. Uh, It was a pretty stressful (laughs) job and you are constantly surrounded by people that are under heavy stress, always complaining constantly. Mm -hmm. When I left that job, there was a marked change in my life. So what I'm, I guess what I'm proposing is should somebody compartmentalize that work life versus their out of work life and find and latch on to a community outside of work that maybe be raises that water level. The high water raises all ships. I would, I would say that, um, we go back to, can I improve this situation? And if I can't, can I like the, maybe the stoicism part, like, can I endure it? Right. And the improving the situation, we've had listeners of the Misfit Project say, my boss now will go with a walk with me at on a walk with me at lunch. And like some of us eat out at a picnic table and moods have changed. So like, can you, can you make that change? Is there anything you can do? Can you have empathy for that person or those people or that group and be like, what can I do to make this a better place to work? So kind of find that chink in the armor to break through yes. and make a small change to start. Right. But you, I don't think it's necessary to take all of your mental fa- faculties when you're supposed to use them with your job <laughs> to then like, okay, I'm going to make this a better place to work. I'm going to get fired because I ain't doing shit. Like there's, <laughs> there's a certain level of I've tried. I've tried to instill positivity here because I know that I've been one of the negative people sometimes. Can I do that? And if the answer is no, it might be no. Like think about like think about other countries where probably not a really good chance. You know the 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 factories where the people are they put nets out because people are jumping. Yeah. Like that whole situation probably really hard to be the ray of sunshine in in that building. It probably is still possible something that you could do to help somebody else. But I think that first step with those personal relationships is what can I do to make this better like a little bit of a look in the mirror. And then at the end of the day, you know what? I'm going to look forward to this at the end of the day. I'm going to look forward to that, like that sort of thing. The, I won't go. So two of the three people at this table um, call me science bitch. And the other one might start calling me that at some point. You're kind of a science bitch too, though. Yeah. You can't make I more smarter. Um, So there was a study that examined data from more than 300,000 individuals that found that a lack of meaningful relationships increased the risk 
of premature death from all causes by 50%. Small number, right? I'll let that settle for a second. <laughs> Those numbers surpass obesity, sedentary lifestyle, and even smoking upwards of a pack of cigarettes a day. Yeah, I read, maybe maybe I just read the link that you sent, but something, it, it's basically like you can almost, I'd say this with a very large grain of salt, almost disregard like modern health and nutrition guidelines and be pretty be pretty well off if you have kind of those relationships and tribal. Well, there's, like also, that, there's also the correlation of typically when someone's feeling better, they're going to make better decisions. Yep. So those those Fair. things go together. And luckily for us, we don't we're not putting out information to that community. There's not a ton of people that smoke a pack a day that listen to this podcast. <laughs> but I wish they would. There are probably people, help. Well, yeah, so that, so that's the idea. There are people <laughs> yeah. in their life that do. Yeah. Everybody knows somebody that smokes a pack a day. Everyone knows someone that smokes a pack a day. So, can we like get our way in by just helping them have, you know, better social situations. And then maybe that will help them quit. Like going straight for you're gross. You need to quit. Not going to work. Yeah. <laughs> like not going to work yeah. at all. People yeah. need to figure things out for themselves. <laughs> Can you help them in some other way where you see an opening? That's, that's such a huge part of the misfit project is episode one, 27 episode two. And a, also, and trying to win. do that in a way that isn't, like judgmental in any way it's not like hey instead of having a cigarette why don't we go for a walk it's like hey you want to go for a walk while it's sunny like yes. outside you know it's not that i think that's part of kind of the low barrier to entry thing is if you're somebody who wants to make that change in somebody else it's not it's not about saying what you're doing is like do this not that it's do let's this. start to do this and and hopefully those other bad habits will start to fall off because you'd want someone to do that for you. Yeah. Like you wouldn't want someone coming in yeah, like, and your goal yeah, is to no help shit, me, but dude, you need No shit, dude. I know smoking is bad for me. Like I don't, you know, I, I know that's bad. I know I'm overweight. I, I, I don't need somebody to tell me that. Right. Like, just positive, positive reinforcement. Yep. So. So we've, we've taken pretty deep dive into the personal relationship side. It's these themes will continue to pop up throughout this episode, throughout other episodes. The, the, kind of moving on now is talking a little bit more about the the scientific side behind sunshine so really 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 easy low barrier to entry like this is as easy as it gets i think <laughs> maybe there's something else that you guys can think of 10 to 20 minutes of sunshine between 10 a.m and 3 p.m will change your health in a profound way yeah like unless you live near the poles, you don't really have an excuse. Like you might have the seasons, poles, like north or south pole. You know what I'm saying? Like if you live, I mean, if some of our friends in Iceland might only get an hour of sun a day sometimes of the year. But it's true. One of those things where you know there there are will be episodes on the workarounds. Fantastic. No, not just the workarounds, but that the Scandinavian culture is fascinating. Happiest people on earth. No sunshine. I don't want to say no sunshine because they get that. There's there's more to that. We'll get there though. We're gonna we're gonna leave that part on ice. No part. Hey. The, 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 Ooh, zinger. Yeah, yeah there was a. Test on that. <laughs> well, you got your. I cut you off. <laughs> I cut you off, and then, no, I was just gonna say. I mean, outside of that situation, like you know, I think a huge part of this too is people need to realize that, like, say your day is super hectic, like you don't have to sit twenty minutes straight. You can go out in the morning with your dog or go for a short walk. It's five minutes long. Take a lunch break. I'm sure every job in America, at least, has a lunch break at some point in the day. Go for a little walk then. And then if you have time in the evening, go for another one before sunsets. Like, I, I mean, I, I relate this back to something as simple as someone who I work with that has diabetes. And I try to explain to them, like, the biggest thing we have to do here is just get you moving around. I don't need for you to do this all at once. Like, you can split this up as much or as little as you'd like. But the important thing is that you get it done every single day. And finding a way to make it work within your lifestyle. Because if you, like you said, if you come from a place of forcefulness, people aren't going to listen. You have to come from a place of like, hey, it's great that you got five minutes this week. Let's try for six this week. Let's keep it going. Like, yeah. Let's try to increase just a little bit. So, so for me, something like this, like if you can't set aside 20 minutes per day, that's okay. Split it up across the entire day because there's got to be points where you can walk outside or sit outside for just a few minutes. Even if it's just a, you know, said you want to go for your water break, you go outside and 
a couple deep breaths and then go back and back back to work. So huh. yeah, you're walking out to your car and you're like, oh, sounds kind of nice. Like, yeah, sit on your trunk, sit on your tailgate, like just take a couple of minutes, do that a few times a day, and you're gonna get there. Man, essentially all I had about sunlight. I mean, it's really cool when we get into the science part. I know you haven't got there yet, but some of the things that sunlight affects are so important for not only your mood, but just like some of the things you mean that D3 regulates upwards of 1000 genes in your body. Yeah. That, that thing, which is super, <laughs> super important because essentially it means you have the ability to take charge of, you know, some of these things that could otherwise go into del- deleterious effect, like where you're, you know, developing heart disease or cancer or stroke. And it, all you have to do is hang outside for 20 minutes a day and mm-hmm. you get rid of all those things. Like, why wouldn't you, that stuff's free medicine to prevent some of these things is insanely expensive. I would go the free route if I were you. I mean, just from truth. You know, and the, the we, I go back and forth on the whole, like I'm leaning as I get older more towards like how much positivity can we put into this message? But there still are some people that scare tactics work. Like when you hear that lack of sunshine leads to depression, breast cancer, high blood pressure, heart disease, arthritis, and all kinds of other things. Those are all bad things. Those are like, that's scary, right? Yeah, but avoid for that. me personally, I like hearing that a healthy diet of sun increases testosterone, dopamine, serotonin, and immune function because we've got four males. I was going to go in this, this rant, <laughs> but I'm not going to sitting at this table right now. And that first word testosterone that was, was, and is the lifeblood of of a male when we're thinking of evolutionary terms we got to get outside we got to hunt we got to chase the animal down we have to procreate like that's that's big and that's that negative feedback loop that we're talking about we do these things less and less and less at a certain point in the year because of maybe what's going on outside or maybe what's going on in our life that starts to go down and that negative feedback loop starts and it feels like this is just, this is who I am now. I'm sad and I don't want to lift weights I anymore. Now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that Jim Jeffrey, the Jim Jeffries bit on the flu <laughs> is incredible, by the way. Um, he's uh, insanely inappropriate, so you wouldn't be surprised that Sherb and I are talking about him right now. Uh, but uh, his, his bit on the flu, it's, good. it's on Netflix. Netflix hit us up for that sponsorship. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, this is this conversation. It's just the, the the benefits of it, the scare tactics, all of that. It's too easy not to not to do this. It's way too easy. Like, and we talk about, you know, we're in Maine. We got a bunch of friends that are, you know, in a much I don't want to say worse situation because again, they're tough and happy and strong communities. But way tougher than a, us. Get a coat and a hat and just walk outside. It's still out there. Like it doesn't have, you know, you might need 25 minutes. You might need to, you know, make a physical activity outside, you know, sort of enhance that situation. But we don't want to go out because we get out of that routine. You know, get out of that routine of like we dinner outside or we do this outside and it just nudges us in that direction. The winter, it's still really possible to get these benefits. It's just doesn't feel as natural to try and do because it's cold outside and it's warm in our house. It, takes it kind of, it kind of depends effort. what you're doing though. If you have like a, an activity to go do outside, like you go outside, you go snowshoeing, you go outside, you go hiking during the winter, you, you feel better. Yeah. You feel better. Like, and that will give you the momentum to want to go do it again. Yeah. Or to find some other activity yep. that's, that's there. Yep. Yeah. It's also like if you can get outside when it like in the cold, in the winter, I'd probably not on this episode talk about the importance of like cold, cold exposure, yeah. that kind of thing for your immune system. And I mean, then, obviously if we're talking about being outside and ancestral health, hot and cold, yeah, like we used to have a better immune system and we used to, you know, get all these benefits from being both hot and cold on a regular basis. Yeah. It, it fits for sure. Yeah. And if, and in the winter, especially if, if you haven't experienced it, like seasonal depression, huge thing, if you can, you know, rebound that. A little bit by getting outside. I mean, it's honestly just putting a name to everything that we've been talking about. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The sort of last piece here within this episode is probably the biggest ask. It's, it's still fairly free. If you disregard that you have to like pay for gas and your car is probably (laughs) not free. Um, the, that the real outdoors, the real outdoors. Um, I, 
when I talk about this episode, the first person that comes to mind instantly is Cody. Um, most of the people listening to this know who Cody Mooney is. And if you know him, you know that being outside and being active and personal relationships are at the tippy top of his list. He's always finding a way to be around people. If you know, he's, he's home and you're not around, he's driving somewhere else to see, you know, another group of people like that. It means a lot to him and he's a pretty healthy dude. Yeah. Yep. You can just tell like in terms of, you know, his mental and physical health, like he has a, a lot of that just kind of figured out because he grew up that way. And he's now in New York city and most of the posts you see of him, he's in Central Park. Oh, Central yeah. Park, it's the place he goes. And he loves, he got his apartment near Central Park on purpose. Like he loves going there. And it's actually a, it's big. Yeah. Central Park is like it's, it's it's strange because you feel like you're not in the city when you're in the center of right. the city like yeah it's crazy and he's drawn to that because of you know in, in my opinion the theory is that the health benefits are there and when he doesn't go there he feels different so he knows okay I want to go over there and do that thing and the the science behind it is um you know, it starts to get out further and further into the like, what is this guy talking about? But the, um, the, the studies where they did the people walking in the city versus walking in the forest and the natural killer cells, which are a type of white blood cell in our in a immune system, the two separate studies were done. One was on a group of males, one was on a group of females, and it showed a significant increase in those natural killer cells commonly known as NK cells that lasted for more than seven days in the group that walked in the forest versus the group that walked in the urban environment. We're talking about something that kills tumors. Like it was this really powerful thing that is in our body that was normally in our body when we were walking through the forest. And, you know, we're talking about where is all of this cancer coming from? We're, you know, here breathing pollution and, who knows what, and you know that could be an episode all on its own. It's it's you know pretty powerful stuff. But if we try to focus on the positive instead, going for a walk in the woods has a way to kill cancer cells in your body. So again, it is a bigger ask for some people. You know, like I know Travis. I think Travis Williams sent me a text message the first time he had fun like outside. <laughs> because for a, because he went I think he went hiking at altitude a few times when he like yeah, didn't when he want was in to Utah. and he hated it yeah like this is stupid I don't want to do it so when I talk to him about it I'm like park bench you go to a park bench sit there <laughs> listen to your oh, psycho boy. music like whatever that's fine like play some Yu Gi Oh there's a there's a way to get everybody involved in this but he did send me I'm trying to think of what the what he did but he sent me something like hey man i went outside and it was cool <laughs> <laughs> which is hilarious travis is very unique in just about every regard yes. that mm -hmm. i can think of but that idea of getting in your car and i mean for me i just, just walk into my backyard I'm, I'm lucky when it comes to that but that idea of actually getting out there and this is where we try to combine concepts we try to say like instead of doing you know hey let's let's go to dinner or let's go to the bar or let's do this or that hey guys do you want to go hiking instead something like that yeah bring your own beer so you don't bring have to go to the beer. bar just bring your own beer i mean shit if if i could smoke a pack of cigarettes a day <laughs> oh, well, <hold> on. <laughs> if i could smoke a pack of cigarettes a day and be just as healthy if i did that that type of thing with you guys then i think Bringing your own beer is not a big deal. You Disregard the cigarettes. Don't <laughs> cigarettes. do that. You won't be as healthy. Drew is a smoker. <laughs> <laughs> Closet Drew smoker. just became a smoker. Oh, man. I mean, beer's mostly water, right? So there's got to be some hydration. And you pee it out because it's a diuretic, but that's okay. <laughs> diuretic. It's a Fancy myth. word. That's a myth. <laughs> Fancy word. It's made up. I think we've covered quite a bit here um it's really fun to get back into this conversation a lot of times when when we're doing a podcast and we're trying to figure out what we're going to talk about there can be some dead air because we're trying to go over this stuff i felt like we were all pulled right back into this like yep. almost instantly because it makes sense it's not it doesn't need to be about the scientific side and 
that says a lot about where we want the Misfit project to go this time around. You know, maybe a little bit less of the, this is exactly how you do this. This is exactly how you do that. And anytime I give a nutrition lecture or a wellness lecture, I write execution conundrum, you know, on both sides of the board to say, most of you know this already. How do we do it? Like what kind of attitudes do we need to adopt? Who can help us? How can I convince someone? How can you convince me? On and on and on. That's the type of conversation that we want to have with the Misfit Project. How do we help people make these decisions? How do we convince people to make these decisions? How does this snowball effect and all this momentum we can create with things like just making sure you're hanging around with people that you want to be around, a little sunshine, maybe a couple of times a month you get yourself into the woods in some way. You're on walking paths, you're on a mountain bike, you're on a snowboard, you're hiking, whatever, like any of that stuff. Um, so the Misfit Project is back. Hey. Um, if this is your first episode, welcome. We're really excited about it. This is, this is a really fun topic for us. We will be back um, with a, a easily connectable topic next time. We'll be talking about sleep. Let's the go. sun has a huge effect on your circadian rhythm. And if you don't know what that means, we will get into it in the next episode. We hope you enjoyed it. Like, share, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff. Let us know what you think about the return of the Misfit Project. And if you like it, we'll keep doing it. See you next time.